This mini lecture is on the physics of climate change, sometimes known as the Milankovitch cycles. Muletin Milankovitch was a Serbian mathematician, born in what is now Croatia, and he spent most of his career as a professor in Belgrade. In 1912 to 1919, he published a series of papers about the mathematics of the Earth's orbit and how orbital variations would affect solar insulation and therefore Earth's climate. These papers revolutionized how scientists understood variations in climate over long periods of time. There have been thousands of scientific research papers since that have tested and confirmed Milankovitch's ideas. When people tell you that Earth has natural cycles of climate, this is what they're talking about. Milankovitch cycles refer to three regular and predictable cycles in Earth's orbit. Together, they control the distance from the Sun and the angle that the Earth is to the Sun and therefore the amount of solar energy that reaches Earth. There's a new vocabulary word in that goes with this part of your lessons and it's insolation. O in the middle, insolation, is a measure of solar energy. SOL is Sun. Do not confuse this with insolation with a U. Now let's look at each of these Milankovitch cycles one at a time. Precession. If you've ever spun a top, you've observed precession. It's nearly impossible to spin a top or a dreidel or something like that without some wobble developing. Earth is spinning on its axis, and it's wobbling too. The average cycle for the wobble is about 23,000 years. That's what the KYR means in this graph. But as you can see, it's not a perfect sine wave. In fact, the repeat time is 19, 22, or 24,000 years. Now, here's the really important part. This precession, this wobble, is regular and it's predictable and it be can be calculated based on physical principles, gravity and etc., how do planets move. So this calculation in this particular graph goes back a million years. That's 1,000 thousands, right? So if you look at that top scale, you have now on the left and 1,000 KYR, 1,000, 1,000 years ago, that's a million years. But you can calculate orbital variations going back as far in time as you want and as far forward in time as you want. So that's precession. The second Milankovitch cycle is tilt. Now you know that the Earth's axis is tilted. Uh, and Currently, it's tilted at about 23 and a half degrees. But did you know that that tilt changes over time? In fact, it does. We call that officially obliquity. That angle of tilt changes between about 22.2 and 24.5 degrees. And the cycle is every 41,000 years. Now, if you look at this obliquity cycle in green, you'll see that it's much more regular than precession in terms of time. But the magnitude of the change varies. So it doesn't always go all the way to 24 and a half degrees. Sometimes the tilt does it tilts a little less or a little more on the overall range. But here's the important part. Again, just like precession, this calculation can be based can be made based on the basic laws of physics, and we can predict this as far back in time and as far forward in time as we like. Now the third one we call eccentricity, but it has to do with the shape of the Earth's orbit. You probably have heard that the Earth's orbit is elliptical, and it is. It's often drawn in a very exaggerated way, like it is here in purple. Um, the amount of, of ellipticity is actually pretty small, but it is in fact measurable and well known. The cycle of eccentricity is basically 100,000 years. That's the 95 and the 125 that you see written in the margin there. So the basic cycle is every 100,000 years, but superimposed on top of that is a 400,000 year cycle. And you can see that it is shown, it shows up here as peak highs, 200, 600, and 1,000 years, 1, years ago. And the lows today and 400,000 and 800,000 years ago. So this is a kind of a complex curve with an underlying repeat every 100,000 years and superimposed on that 
a significant effect every 400,000 years that magnifies that original effect. Now, solar forcing is not a orbital cycle, but it is something that changes. This is this refers to the amount of this radiation that the sun puts out. Um, by convention, it's calculated at 45 degrees north in the summer. It's a much smaller effect than either of the first three that we talked about, but it is significant and measurable and cyclical, and it has its place in the overall picture of how much solar insulation hits the Earth. Now, just like any other uh, curve, you can add these effects together. You can add all of these four curves together and produce a super curve that defines solar insulation as it hits the Earth through time, going back as far as we want in history and forward as far as we want in history. And so that's what this black curve is. This black curve is the sum of all of the other curves that you see in this, um, in this graph. And in this case, the authors have marked, for your convenience, warm and cold times in Earth's history. Now, on the left, we're looking at a warm time. And if you go back in time, you had a glacial period just before that. About 100,000 years ago, another warm period. In fact, just about every 100,000 years, a warm period. Um, and then some of those exaggerated by the eccentricity curve. So this is a graph that is showing you the temperature calculated from isotopes and the insulation calculated from first principles going back 250,000 years. In this case, now today is on our right, sorry about the confusion, and 250,000 years ago is on the left. And you can see how the solar insulation really accounts for the vast majority of the temperature variation on Earth over that time period. So that's the physics behind the natural climate change cycles, and when we're going to superimpose other data on top of that as we move forward.